All right. So this one gets into fun. It says factor and then simplify, right? All right. So let me just go through a quick little review of our factoring. First thing, factoring, when we had GCF, would be something like this. You would say, hey, fa what, you know, factor this out, right? And what you do is you take your GCF, which in this case was a 3x, and then you divide it out out of each term, and then you take what your middle term is out there, right? That's factoring by the GCF. The next um, kind of learn of factoring we did, dealt with was a, when we had like a trinomial. So it'd be like x squared plus um, 7x plus 10, right? And it didn't really matter. You know, there's whenever you saw a trinomial, then you could say, oh, it's going to be, we're going to take two different binomials and multiply to factor, right? That was the factor in a trinomial. Here's factoring. It could be any polynomial, but you factor out the GCF. Then there's a couple special terms where maybe we had um, the difference of two squares, where you had like uh, 9, or yeah, let's just do it, a squared minus b squared, right? Whenever you had a square number, squared term minus another squared terms, you could factor it into a plus b times a minus b, right? So we look for a difference of two squares. There's also perfect square trinomials we could factor. Then there's one more left which was another grouping, special grouping term, was what happened when we had, um, I don't, I'm just making up this problem. But what happened when we had four terms, right? So there's one when we had a polynomial and we had a GCF, we factored that out. When we had a factoring trinomial, we, we, there's a special way to do this. Then we had difference of two squares. And then the last term is when we had four terms, we had what we called the grouping technique. And what that meant was, you grouped the first two terms, and you group the last two terms. So out of all of these techniques, what do you think I might want to apply for this one? Mm -hmm. The grouping, because they have four terms. Because they don't all have a common term, right? So I can't do it by GCF. There's not three of them, so I can't use a factoring by a trinomial. It's not two terms, two square numbers subtracted. So I can't use difference of two squares. I'm going to want to apply the grouping technique. So let's go back through the grouping technique, and I'll show you what to do. So in factoring the grouping technique, remember the first important thing that you want to look at is just taking your first two terms and then your last two terms. So we group the first two terms. Then what you're going to do is you're going to determine the GCF for each term. So I'm just going to write GCF up top for each one. And that means the greatest common factor. So ladies and gentlemen, If I said, what's the GCF of this, you could say that the GCF is this one right here. The GCF of this is the number, the greatest term. Right, the greatest term that factors into both of them would be x squared. So that would leave me with x minus 1 when you factor it out. But here, we don't have x's cubed. And we also have the cosecant. However, it's, all I'm doing is adding the cosecant. So what do you think the greatest common factor of these two terms would be? Cosecant squared of x. All right, And then for this term, uh, actually, I'll get to that in a second. So let's factor this out. So just like I did here, when you take your GCF, you divide it out of both terms. So I'm going to divide both terms by cosecant squared of x. And that's going to leave me with, just like how I did it here, that's going to leave me with 1 cosecant of x minus 1. Does everybody see what I did, how I did it? It's just like the um, polynomial I did over there with the GCF, except we have cosecants with it. And then remember, you can always check your answer when factoring by GCF just by using distributive property back. When I do cosecant squared of x times cosecant of x, do I get cosecant cubed? Yes. Cosecant squared of x times negative 1 gives me negative cosecant squared of x. So I did it correctly. All right. When factoring by grouping, we remember, we need to make sure that both terms have the same kind of common term. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to make this look like cosecant squared minus 1. So when I'm looking for my GCF, the greatest common factor of this one I'm going to use as negative 1. I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So when I factor out a negative 1, I now get a positive cosecant of x minus 1. All right, And that's the kind of the main thing you've got to be looking for when doing grouping. Sometimes you'll just have another GCF that you can factor it out. But you want to make sure that inside your two, uh, 
parentheses is the exact same binomial. So therefore, you wouldn't just want to factor out 1 or just leave it there. You want to make sense this is positive and this one's negative. You're going to want to factor out a negative 1. Now they're exactly the same. So by factoring the GCF out of both terms, now I have two terms here. right? Terms are separated by the addition and subtraction sign. Since these are being multiplied by each other, um, they're still part of the same term. So now I have two terms. So now I need to determine what is the GCF of these two terms. What do these two terms share as far as a, as far as a term, yes? Right, so the cosecant, so you could say like the GCF of both these terms is equal to the cosecant of x minus 1. So you're going to factor that out. So the cosecant of x minus 1 times cosecant squared of x minus 1. All right, and then we can look at this and say, how can I multiply this? Um, what can I multiply this to be? And you could say that that could be cosecant. Um, well, we have 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared of x. So therefore, this is equal to cotangent, right? Yes? Times cotangent of x. And let's convert here. So let's see, that would be 1 over sine minus 1 times um, cosine over sine. All right, so by multiplying that across, it doesn't really seem like that's going to give me a more simplified answer. So I would probably just leave it as this product right here. OK? If you multiplied it through and you, and you could you know, simplify it a little bit further, then you, I would multiply these two terms. But since I have sine both as my denominator, I'm just going to kind of leave it as that. Yes? Can that be cotangent squared? Yes, it is cotangent squared. Thank you. All right, but I'll just leave it as that answer. Make sense? 